Listen, I think rates do one thing very well. They equilibrate supply and demand. We are going through this extraordinary period of liquidity that, by the way, changes at the end of this month. So, we do, so people underestimate. Everybody talks about the Fed taper and how much the Fed's doing in the, in the form of QE. But the Treasury's general account keeps paying down, and it's going to pay down again a significant amount uh, this month. So the system is bursting with liquidity. And, and quite frankly, everybody knows that rates should be higher than where they are. These real rates, given the economy and how it's, uh, how it's doing, and we can, we can, we should, by the way, we should talk about some evolution of the economy. But the economy, how well it's doing, these real rates are priced wrong. There's too much liquidity in the system. And then you get a catalyst where, where positioning is short and, and you move there. So I don't, I don't, I mean, I agree with the commentary around inflation. And, uh, but I do think there's a liquidity dynamic that if you get, when you get into the second half of the year, I know we've talked about it on the show, when you get in the second half of the year or more so into the fall, you'll get a dynamic where the amount of issuance the Treasury is doing, when you don't have that much liquidity coming in, it'll be a different paradigm. But for now, it's definitely equilibrating the fact that you have so much liquidity coursing its way through the system. And people think that real rates should move higher, ourselves included. I mean, these real rates are ridiculous. Um, but it's going to take a bit of time, and you've got to be a bit patient around that. Right. So regardless of where they should be, let's play the game at where they are, right? Low rates, mm -hmm. system, in your words, bursting with liquidity. That sounds positive for stocks to me. Listen, I, mean, I still think equities are going higher. I mean, uh, Josh's points are well taken, and uh, Steve said it's well taken. I mean, uh, we've rallied a lot. I mean, <laughs> you know, we did pull back a bit, but uh, I was watching all your headlines yesterday about new record here, new record here. We, we've, we've rallied a lot. I still think stocks are going higher. When you go through some of these companies that you all, you all just talked about, some of these quality companies are throwing off 20% ROE, and you've got positive momentum around growth. Um, I think they're, they're going to go higher. You think about where we're going to be. Sometimes you have to invest based on where we're going to be two to three years hence. And if you think of where we're going to be two to three years hence, the returns you're going to get from these companies throwing off this sort of ROE, this sort of earnings growth is, uh, and by, by the way, not just earnings growth, but free cash flow yields or earnings yields, pretty darn attractive, including places like software. People talk about software is it too much of a growth. There are a lot of companies within software that are actually throwing off tremendous amounts of revenue today, and their multiples are, are not unreasonable given, given, that, uh, given that level of, uh, of cash flow. All right, so now I'm confused because, uh, you know, one, one minute ago you're defending the bond guys, right? And now I feel <laughs> like you're, you're dissing the bond market because what if I come back and say, well, isn't the bond market usually right, Rick? I mean, maybe the bond market's telling us something the stock market either doesn't know or doesn't want to hear. So I don't, by the way, I don't think it's, I don't, given the amount of liquidity in the system, I don't think one is necessarily right versus the other. You know, why can the equity market be as buoyant as it is while the bond market is well supported? It's just too much liquidity in the system. People are, the amount of demand for yield in the system and the amount of demand for returns. Think about if you're a pension fund, you're an endowment, uh, you're an insurance company, the demand for yield is extraordinary. So I don't, I don't necessarily think one is right versus one is wrong. I do think bonds today are, are aggressively priced. My sense is when you think about where they're going to be three to six months hence, they're going to be, they're going to be higher in yield. But I think you've got to be a bit patient today because particularly this month when you've got this sort of liquidity coursing its way through the system. And by the way, there's some, you know, some of the data, you know, I've talked about, I don't know, on this show, but on, uh, you know, some of the shows earlier, the, the growth in China is slowing a bit. And one of the things that's really interesting in the economy, and I've been pretty bullish on your show about growth, I still think growth is going to be good, but what's happening is some of the supply, you're actually not able to fulfill some of that growth. You see that in houses, you see that in cars, by the way, you see that in people, is that there's actually, you know, we're going to operate through with what will be great growth, tremendous demand. It's actually a bit trickier today to actually supply that demand. Hmm.